will be both are same. Next, it's time to recall the anatomy of the of a cross section. If you see the innermost lining of the heart is the endocardium, it's nothing but an endothelial lining. In between is the muscle mass and outside is the epicardium. This is the structure of the heart. It's appropriate at this stage because the muscle mass is not only on the surface, but is also into the septum, is also into the septum. And covering the muscle mass on the outer aspect, that is into the luminal aspect, is the endocardium. Now, this is an important slide before we move further. Next. We go on to the next important uh, discussion, interventricular septum and uh, the septal defects. Normally what happens, the formation of the interventricular septum, initially we will begin with our understanding that right now there is only a single ventricle. From the basal part of this single ventricle, can you see that blue uh, projection? That is the interventricular septum. It runs, it starts runs upwards towards the endocardial cushion. Remember, we have discussed this endocardial cushion in the discussion of the formation of the interatrial septum. Now, the point is, as it goes upwards, the space between, I remember I told you about that plywood sheet. Now, this is a different situation here from the plywood sheet is pushed up from below. So what happens is this uh, ventricle is now divided into two cavities, a right ventricle and a left ventricle. The point of junction between the interventricular septum and the structure above is at the endocardial cushion. Now that's the importance of the uh, figure A. Now watch carefully the figure A. Um, this blue structure that is going up doesn't hit, I repeat, doesn't hit the endocardial cushion exactly at the plane of the interatrial septum. You see, watch this carefully. This is very important because at that position, because there is a non-congruence, it doesn't hit perfectly so that the two walls are not uh, aligned with each other. There is a small area. Now that is shown best in the item B, concentrate on item B. There is a small area where you know, this endocardial cushion itself has to pitch in to form the wall between the uh, interatrial and the interventricular septum. Now, that means the endocardial cushion itself makes a contribution to the formation of the uh, interventricular septum. Now, this component is known as the membranous part of the interventricular septum. This is important because uh, more frequently, ventricular septal defects occur in this region. More frequently, uh, this is the region where interventricular septal defects are uh, known to occur. Now, this is important point because this is also the reason why at this junction, it is not only the ventricles that have are separated from each other. In the event of a septal defect, the ventricles will not only communicate with each other depending upon the location. Let's say if there is a, a problem here, this yellow line, I'm showing the yellow shading. I'll change it to red for uh, one minute. You see, if there is a septal defect here, the two ventricles will communicate with each other. But if there is a defect here, this region, not only the two ventricles will communicate with each other, but the right atrium will also communicate with the left ventricle because of this situation. I hope you understood this. I hope you understood this. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, therefore, therefore, the principle that I am trying to put across is forget whether the atrium communicates with the ventricle or the ventricles communicate with each other. In principle, what is happening is either there is a left to right shunt or more dangerously, there is a right to left shunt. One of the two shunts will take over, right? But generally speaking, initially in after birth, the left ventricular pressure is higher than the right ventricular pressure. I repeat, the left ventricular pressure is higher than the right ventricular pressure. In the event that there is a defect in the interventricular septum, blood tends to leak through the orifice 
into the uh, right ventricle into the right ventricle. The consequence of this is again obvious. I have already told you the principle as long as there is sufficient oxygenated blood in the systemic circulation. Otherwise, let's put it across more specifically here. As long as our sufficient oxygenated blood is going into the aorta. Things are safe, although the level of efficiency and the oxygenation may be not to the optimum. It may not be uh, really uh, life threatening, but then sooner or later the severity of the disease catches up and we may have to look into it on a more serious note. Same thing here also pulmonary hypertension can set in reverse reversal of blood flow can occur. What was initially the left to right shunt may turn into right to left shunt. Generally speaking, particularly in the reference of the interatrial septal defect, whenever a original shunt is reversed for its own uh, pathophysiological reasons without the intervention of uh, any operations or anything, such a condition is known as Eisenmenger's syndrome, known as Eisenmenger's syndrome. The fact that a left to right shunt has converted into a right to left shunt itself signifies the seriousness of the disease and warranting uh, surgical intervention. You see, warranting surgical intervention. Next, shall I proceed further? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Next. sir. Uh, there's nothing much. I already covered this uh, in the previous uh, slide. A particular slide we can move fast. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the location of the membranous septum and how uh, it is more prone for uh, ventricular septal defects. Next, this is the diagrammatic representation of the ventricular septal defect. And I will show you one more where it may not be even a single defect. It can even be a multiple defect like this. Can you see here? One, two, three, four, five. Six, so many defects can be there in the same ventricle. Basically, <clears throat> this brings to show that the ventricular mass, uh, the interventricular septal mass, is being formed in small bits and pieces. They fail to unite with each other, resulting in these uh, gaps in the septum. Now, this is just to say. Uh,